All right. Anyways, that was weird. Okay. All right. What an that interesting was... start to our episode. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, welcome to the Clone Boys podcast. That was interesting. I may have to cut some of that out, but um, yes, this is the Florum arc. Something like that. Yeah, it's been a little bit since we. It's been quite a bit since we've actually recorded. So um. Oh man, we're gonna try and get back into it. And this is a pretty chill, pretty chill arc. I don't really have much to say about it. I didn't even do a whole lot of prep for it. So we'll get through it. It'll be interesting. Uh yeah. this is the the arc where Dooku gets captured by the pirates. And yeah. Shenanigans are... ensue. Yes. What are our thoughts on those one those those episodes? Um, well, I mean, all right, I'll be honest. I haven't seen these episodes in actually quite a while. What I will say is I, all right. So in my history of watching Clone Wars, uh, I didn't, you guys know this and some of the view, viewers, listeners uh, may know this, but cause I bring it up every once in a while, but I didn't start watching Clone Wars right away when it was airing. I watched, um, I watched season, like half of season two while it was coming out, but the rest of like season one and season two, I watched reruns of. So there were some episodes that just fell by the wayside and didn't get reruns or I missed those reruns and I didn't watch them. And this is one of the arcs where I actually didn't see it in my original watch through of Clone Wars. I I watched it way later uh, when it was actually out on Netflix, when Clone Wars was on Netflix after uh, season six came out there. So I the first time I ever saw like one of these pirate guys was actually when I got like my ultimate sticker collection of Star Wars Legos. And I saw Turk Falso on, on, the, on the front page and I was like, who are you and and then i never found out until like several years later and i was like oh okay hmm. um so these episodes are weird the i honestly i don't even remember the level in lego star wars for this for these episodes because they don't really follow the episode all that much from what I can remember. wonder if they're like a Jar Jar focused gameplay. It, it kind of is. Like from what I can remember, it's like capturing command posts as Commander Stone, which is hmm. my clone oh, boy. Oh yeah, there was episode. a whole other part of that. I, I remember that's like my only yeah. time that I played clo- uh, Lego Star Wars 3 was uh, I would play like the... I'd go over to a friend's house and we would play the um the capturing command post one. I just remember we sat there for like a half hour just fighting each other. Yeah, so some of the levels were structured around that kind of gameplay and okay. I think this episode was one of them. So it doesn't follow the episode story very much at all. That's uh, a really weird decision for a level like because this has nothing to do with any sort of warfare yeah no it it was really it's really strange it it's like with the hidden enemy uh level when they didn't focus at all on the you know hidden enemy yeah <sighs> yeah, yeah still yeah. annoys me still yeah, annoys they focused, me. they focused solely on jar jar trying to make his way to the compound yeah okay yeah 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 because oh okay that game was based that game had like a focus on like battle stuff so you like you'd build infrastructure like barracks and cannons and tanks to send across the battlefield to get objectives Hmm, okay and it was just jar jar building tanks and getting clones to go assault stuff hmm riveting (laughs) <laughs> riveting completely and utterly riveting not yeah i bet <laughs> well so <clears throat> this is the i guess we'll start with the first one dooku captured that's the name of the episode oh wow there we go 
So the title card. The winding path to peace is always a worthy one, regardless of how many turns it takes. I don't really see what this has to do with this episode. I'm I'm gonna be real with you lads. There's not much peace in this episode. I, I no, think... it's there's a lot of chaos. Well, I, even going beyond like, does it work in the episode? I'm like, I don't know if that's a you know a thing I want to be telling kids. You know, peace at all costs is worth it. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, it, that. That, that was... sounds like the you're you're trying to say the um. The ends always justify the means. I guess I'll read the the announcement. I don't remember. I don't remember everything about what happened in this episode. So, the annou the announcer the the little reading was manhunt. After a long and perilous search, the Jedi finally tracked down Separatist leader Count Dooku. During a heroic attempt to capture the Count, Anakin Skywalker has gone missing. Having lost contact with Skywalker, Obi-Wan heads towards his friend's last known location, a lone Separatist frigate in the far reaches of the Outer Rim. Outer space. Yes. Wow. Um, for some reason I get... did this whole backstory on like the the uh the Jedi and the, the clones. I don't know why I wrote that, but um yeah, the episode officially starts with Obi Wan in a space suit, uh, heading to the Separatist frigate. Out of freaking nowhere. <laughs> yeah, just just for well, I mean, uh, you know, Anakin and Ahsoka got their space suits in that one, that one episode where they're just like on tanks in space. So now Obi Wan gets his. More action yeah. figures to sell. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I find it funnier that there's. A... You don't ever see him get from a ship here, so I just, I like the idea that Obi-Wan just went from a Republic frigate and he just drifted through space until he reached this frigate. That would be, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously like, there's, like, that's guys. fine, but, um, like, of course he took a ship, but the fact that we don't see it, that was just my first thought. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, all right, guys, hold on. I have to drift through space for the next year or so to get to Count Dooku. <laughs> and then he there. finally gets there. He's like, oh, wait, I forgot. These ships have hyperspace travel. He's already on the other side of the galaxy. Oh, rats. Oopsie. They saw me coming with their radar. <laughs> well, I feel like it'd be a little, it'd be a little faster than that because it'd be like he starts drifting and a week later he's like, oh, oops, I starved. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, well, he... I forgot to bring my snacks with me. <laughs> well, he makes it in. Uh, he enters this empty cell, and he feels the presence of someone, so he draws his lightsaber on Anakin. Wow, what a surprise. Yeah. And then they banter for a second about um, Anakin Wait. being here. Like, they, they have some, some back and forth, because Obi-Wan gives him his lightsaber... And Anakin is just like, why? Why didn't I? Why wasn't I allowed to have this? And Obi Wan was just like, well, we needed to make sure that your capture seemed like it. It, it had to seem convincing. convincing. And then they banter on whether or not he would have his lightsaber. So I guess th there's just so much to uh to start with, right? The Galactic Army of the Republic planned out a mission in which one of their generals, the same one who's, you know, caused a lot of trouble in the war already and knows, <laughs> like, so much information about the effort, that their plan is to send him to get purposefully captured so that from behind enemy lines he could discover information about the Separatists and possibly find out where Count Dooku is and try and get him. That's, like... That's the plan. I see no issues, clearly. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of lame. And also this idea that uh, taking, taking his lightsaber from him will somehow make it more convincing. I feel like that would make it less convincing, but you know. Like, it's like, uh, how in the world did you just come here unprepared? Are you trying to get captured? No. No, 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 uh. <laughs> no, 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 uh. no. But yeah, the, the point a, being, he's, he's like he's wearing caught. one of those signs that people wear on like the side of the road to get people to come to their business. It just says, capture me, please. <laughs> he's just doing like sign twirling. Mm. 
Yes. Uh, well, the point is, Anakin he got is, will work for will work for prison time. <laughs> will be in prison. Will work for for, <laughs> for free. Ah uh, yes. Well, um, Anakin's caught, and now because he's met up with Obi Wan, they know where Dooku is. He's on the ship. Oh, how convenient! Yes. Um, I guess let's point out a positive here. Uh, because they they visit Dooku and um. They they engage in a little banter. Uh, Dooku's words towards Obi Wan and Anakin are like very venomous as far as like both delivery and the things that he says. Right, he he prods Anakin for being rescued by Obi Wan. You know, try trying to point that out as a negative towards Anakin, which you know obviously frustrates him. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it it's what leads to him chasing Dooku, like you know. Kind of similarly to how he does in Attack of the Clones. Uh, but yeah, it's in character for him to do this, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I would I would be inclined to agree with that assessment. Uh -huh. But as this happens, uh, Ahsoka and Rex, they emerge from hyperspace, and they start bombarding, or bombarding, bombarding the ship. They start bonding with the they ship. Start you know, bond they start, they start just telling like, it sweet. They start whispering sweet. They start talking about their feelings. Year. They're just like, a hey, ship, a hey, girl, listen, I'm over here serving the Republic. Listen, over there serving you don't the need, you don't need, you don't that need super, all this. You don't need that super fast <laughs> hypersonic <laughs> Providence so dreadnought. Yeah. You know, I can give you a good time. No, I'm just <laughs> thinking of a Venator. I'm not like the other ships. Not, not a Venator. Uh, the Separatist forgets, just with anime eyes going like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm not like <laughs> the other Venators, I swear. <laughs> But, Listen, uh, I'm special. I'll, I'll treat you good. They start getting bombarded, and Dooku, <laughs> Dooku has a secret hatch that he just falls down. Yeah, he's he like, just goes. Right, see ya. Like, why would you install that? It's such a silly hatch. Like, it's I don't so know why it's okay. here, other than this specific circumstance. It's like if the someone ever charges into my hat. office, I and I need to fall real quick. I, oh man, this hatch is gonna. Do I, so I like cool. to think that it's he he installed it with the mindset that it's a slide that will lead him to his ship. Yeah. <laughs> I must have this slide installed here. Build uh, this build this particular uh cruiser with the specific fun slide down to my the ship. The fun slide. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't use it just in case he's he's like being confronted. He he just uses it just for fun. Yeah, he just goes down. We we off to my ship in order to kill the Jedi. Yeah, I, I may be Christopher Lee, who has done many many things in my long life, but I do like to have fun too. Yes. I love slides. We. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think. Sorry, the like Lord of the Rings, uh, in that the giant tower where Saruman falls off of, that it's like the same deal. It's just got a, a slide that goes all the way down. Slide. That's how he gets down. <laughs> Yeah, that's how he gets down from there. We. We. Staircases are for sissies. We. Right, yes, anyway. Well, he, he goes down and Anakin uh, joins him. He he jumps down and he's just like, I'm going to cut him off. You meet him at the hangar. And Obi-Wan's just like, why do I even try? But, but yeah. To be um, as cool as these guys. Yes. They they have a bit of a, a fight where Dooku's zapping him with lightning and Anakin's blocking it with his lightsaber. And it's like, whoa, that's so cool. And then Anakin lands on this uh, platform because it splits into two diverging paths. And he's just like, hmm, I'll guess I'll go down this one. And it turns out to be the other, plot, the other path that Dooku went down. So I just find it funny that Anakin loses Dooku, even though all he had to do was fall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then Dooku Anakin. gets away. Yes, Dooku and then, ends uh, up in the hangar. Uh, I do like what uh the 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 droid. He he's like shocked, and then is just all right. Business time. He's like ah, ah no, your ship is ready, sir. <laughs> we weren't expecting special forces this quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why they call us special forces. But yes, anyway. uh, Obi Wan enters the hangar, and we see him like he sees Dooku escaping, so he gets in a different ship, and 
yes, Anakin shows up and he gets in the ship and they start bantering. Um, well, yeah, and I they sure contact Ahsoka the... to say, we need reinforcements. I love the Anakin Obi Wan banter. Wow. Yes, it's a very interesting banter. I feel like it's very uh, stunted dialogue. It feels very unnatural, but. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it feels pretty forced. Mm hmm. But we, we can go on. Uh, actually, we're just about to reach it because uh, we get to the fight. Uh, they, they have this big fight and they're able to hit, they shoot Dooku down and he he goes to land on a planet. And the dialogue is just like, that was easy. Lucky for you, I'm an excellent shot. And then Obi-Wan's just like, well, no, those fighters are attacking. <laughs> it's just like, um, man, I, I get it. Lucky it's for like, you, I'm a good pilot. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, this right. is clearly, you don't trust your audience of children to recognize what's happening on the screen. So you feel like you have to reinforce that by telling them. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It just, it feels like the dialogue, I don't know if it's a problem with the dialogue or if it's a problem with the, the delivery, but it's just so unnatural. Yeah, it feels super forced. Mm -hmm. So they he gets hit, he starts to crash land, and the same thing happens to uh, Anakin and Obi Wan. So they they're chasing him down the planet to the planet, and they get on the planet, and um, uh, they find Dooku's ship. Uh, Obi Wan notices there's a the engine is damaged and the there's a homing beacon, so it's like Dooku's waiting for the Separatists to rescue him before, like, and he's hiding in it like a cave. So they destroy the beacon and they start looking for him. Ah, uh, what's next? I feel like we're just rushing through the episode, but we're only like six minutes into the episode. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on. It's Maybe it's just a lot of plot. Bit. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, what he said. Mm-hmm. Um. One thing that I do like in this moment is that um, they're able to feel Dooku's presence because mm -hmm. they, they feel a alien. lot of aliens, a lot of life forms in the cave, and Dooku is one of them. And they I think that's feel the dark side. It's really cool that uh, the Force could be used, however infrequently, uh, but it can still be used as a form of tracking. That's like that's cool, and it's narratively consistent. Mm-hmm. It's like I feel one life form, and it's mm -hmm. gotta be. Do I feel Dooku's. Well, you, you see that force. especially in um, in like season seven of Clone Wars. I I'm recalling specifically of Ahsoka as she's leaving the planet to uh, go on her like little spice mission, and she mm -hmm. goes past a Venator, and Anakin's on it, and he feels her presence without like really knowing what it is. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. I like I like when you see things like that. Or even in Return of the Jedi, we were talking about that earlier with um them Vader able to tell yeah. Luke aboard the shuttle. And vice versa. Uh how mm -hmm. even Leia can feel Vader's presence to some extent and she's like, Luke, you gotta get out of here. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that kind of stuff. Uh but yes, we see the Jedi using their lightsabers as flashlights my favorite <laughs> yeah uh, i find that kind of funny as a concept because it, it, it works but you like um there was a i actually saw like a, a video this was like in a video somewhere or maybe it was like a short or whatever but it was like you can't really use a lightsaber as like a light source because i mean sure you'll illuminate the things around you but if it's right in your face, you're just all you're gonna do is blind yourself. You're just gonna be like see, staring at the light, and you'll be like, ah, ah, yes, I see blue, I see blue. Well, see, I thought about that, and I actually uh, just pulled out my phone because uh, you know you got the flashlight app on your phone or just the, mm -hmm. the quick setting, and I, I just set it down on my table, and I mean you can still see a lot of it. Yeah, the light's in your face, but um, you can still see a lot of it. Um. And I mean, it works. It works even more in this scene because they have no other means to illuminate the room. So it's like, yeah, it's yeah, a little frustrating. Worst case scenario, you hold it like behind you, or you hold it out of view of your your face. 
which I think they do a good job of like holding it up. Yeah, yeah, and you can even see it in the um scene. They're holding it up, and yeah, they're looking in that direction, but they're not looking directly at their lightsaber. So yeah, That's I cool. think it was. I think that the short I'm referring to is was more towards when they did that in one of the live action movies, and they mm, yeah didn't do that. <laughs> oh, like in Kenobi, where he he's like looking directly at his lightsaber the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Uh, I mean, and it even works in, like, video games, right? I, I'm i thinking of uh, Jedi Fallen Order, where whenever Cal enters a cave, he turns on his lightsaber and he holds it above his head. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Agreed. I didn't realize we'd talk so much about uh, the lightsabers <laughs> being used as a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just... Next. When it says lightsaber, it, well, that Dooku is a traps him of it. Oh, uh, yeah, what's next? Dooku drops a bunch of rocks on him. <laughs> Woo. And then he steals Anakin's lightsaber. And, yes, he destroys the entrance as well in the process. So it's like, hmm, okay. It, it feels very uh, Saturday morning cartoon villain for Dooku here, because he's just like, haha, let's see how you'll do without this, uh, Skywalker. Yeah. As like, okay, um, I mean, I never pegged uh, Dooku to be the scheming, I mean, like, yeah, he's definitely the scheming villain, but he, <laughs> he doesn't have the kind of Saturday morning cartoon personality to... I, I don't do know. that it, it's it works in the show but i feel like it's out of character just a little bit yeah i would i would be inclined to agree also mm -hmm. i find it really frustrating that anakin and obi-wan go out this quickly especially since they would be tracking dooku with the force yeah and if right they go that. out this quickly and they're knocked out why didn't dooku kill them because i he needs to get out of there, and he doesn't have time for them, and they're, they'll die anyway. Duh. Uh, no, yes, I, that I, one. I don't know. Well, he, he gets out of there, and then he sees uh, there's something. There's, there's something something happening at his ship. There's uh, there's some it's pirates there. And, and they, have like, a, hmm. they, they have a... They have a flying saucer. Yeah, so he decides instead of waiting, he's going to talk to the pirates. I mean, uh, it makes sense because, I mean, uh, what other way does he have off a rock? Yeah, especially when um, he he sees how close the uh, the Jedi landed to him. So they definitely inspected his ship and he can probably uh, he can probably conclude that. His, the yeah, they destroyed the beacon. So any way for him to connect contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he meets this pirate captain named Hondo Onaka and they engage in some pleasantries. Yeah, Hondo, 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 Hondo Onaka. A lot of people Ooh, really Disney like him. Really likes to put in like freaking everything. Yeah, a lot of people really. I I haven't met someone who particularly dislikes Hondo. So just mm. everywhere. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, yes. Here's the here's the fun thing. I haven't found anyone who dislikes Hondo. However, I've also really haven't met anyone who they're like, oh yeah, Hondo's my favorite character. Like, mid. he's not anyone's favorite. I'll be but... honest, I don't know how much... I, I like the concept of him in this arc, but for now, I just... I, I'm not the biggest fan of him. Hmm. But, um... I... He's got a great voice actor. Oh um, yeah, I, oh, I like the voice actor. Jim Jim Cummings does like a thousand and one voices, and I think he does really good with Han like, giving Hondo like a very specific voice that you can tell it's Hondo. Yes, absolutely. It's a very recognizable voice, which is exactly what you would want for this kind of character, mm -hmm. that charismatic leader type. Yeah. Ah, uh, Wikipedia want that. explains that the Onaka gang is a pirate faction formed by Hondo soon after he escaped from slavery. And the Onaka gang, really as we as we'll come to learn, tend to deal in spice trades and they collect ransoms from various figures that they manage to kidnap. Uh I don't know how much of this was explained canonically, but that's what I gathered from the legends site on the wiki. 
So I, I don't know how much of it is actually canon, but I would assume that most of that is. Yeah, here's hoping that's a pretty cool backstory. And... That's cool, yeah. I like, I like it as a concept that uh, Hondo had to, you know, escape from slavery. And uh, yeah, then he, he kind of uses kidnapping as a form of gaining money. But we will discover more of that later. Uh, it just shows who he is as a character, which I actually really, I really like. Mm -hmm. Well... Back with our heroes, Anakin escapes from his pile of rocks, and he desperately starts to look for Obi-Wan, and he realizes that his lightsaber is missing. Uh, but then Obi-Wan shows up, and he scolds Anakin for losing his lightsaber, and when he attempts to use his own, it stops working. <laughs> Got him. And of course, right after that, this creature called a Gundark shows up. Woo. Hey. And now they have cool to fight thing, it. Um, so I, when I was a kid and I saw this, I had no idea what the heck a Gundark was. So, you know, this was the first time you saw it. And in canon, this is the first time you see it. Uh-huh. Um, but it was mentioned in The Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah it's the uh, when, when, um, when Han, Han pulls Luke out of the back to tank, he's like, oh, you look like you could pull the ears off a Gundark. And at the time, mm -hmm. nobody knew what a Gundark was. And There's just a line of dialogue. But now they they made them real. Gundarks wow. are real, guys. I like how they have the two giant arms, and then they have like two more two, small arms. Two yeah, I don't, like, I don't see what like, the, um, the physical utility of that would be, but uh, it's like the Mutos from the Godzilla universe. They have like the same thing. It's like, okay, what's the utility of those? Mm -hmm. it, it, and no. despite like the weird plot elements that led us here, I do really like that we're now in a position where the Jedi have to operate without their main weapons. Yeah. That's that's cool. I like to see how we we can see the Jedi relying on the force or their own abilities to get through a scenario rather than just a lightsaber. Um, yeah. I think a big part of that is I always, I almost always enjoy stories that test characters in interesting ways, like Spider-Man and Batman, right? Their rogues gallery, the reason why it's so cool and why it's like the, the most iconic villains is not only because they're extremely unique, but each villain tests the hero in creative and unique ways. Oh yeah. It's, it's never really like, like with, with, let's say Superman and doomsday is usually just like who can punch the hardest mm -hmm. yeah and then when you get to like the riddler and batman or i mean um, the joker is like the I, antithesis yeah. of the batman's morals yeah, yeah it, it's very interesting to see them operate and mm -hmm. I, I yes i very much it's and it's it's kind of like that same thing with like Spider-Man and Mysterio. You don't fight Mysterio. You have to outthink him. Or or even Electro. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Electro because he's super overpowered. But this idea yeah. of how do you how do you fight? I guess it's more Sandman. How do you fight a creature oh. that can become maybe not an intangible object, but can form himself to be sort of anything? Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting to see them being tested. Uh, Turning it back to Star Wars, I, I really like that uh, now they have to operate without their lightsabers. Um, I'd be very, I'd be very interested in seeing the episode "Lightsaber Lost" because that's Ahsoka having to not only work by herself without Anakin, she's working with a different master, and she's trying to get her lightsaber back. Not a lot for some reason that episode gets glossed over a lot. People don't really like it, but I actually really like "Lightsaber Lost." I'm excited um, to to revisit it. I, I don't know if I like it or not. I'm I'm ready to see it because I know that that's something that tests a hero in a way that is like you have to operate without your skill set. That's like yeah, a. I, I'm thinking yeah. of uh, video games now. Uh, the the game Bioshock. There's a there, It's a, pretty much a staple with a lot of games. There are those moments where um they take all your weapons from you and you have to operate with a very limited skill set in bioshock mm -hmm. you've gained these plasmids which are like mind powers and now you have to fight a bunch of enemies without your guns with just your plasmids so like or in you can in, uh oh yeah you go in metal gear solid 
same thing. There's a in Metal Gear Solid One and Two. There's a scene where you get captured and interrogated, and after you get interrogated, you have to break out uh, of prison without any of your gear, um, and you have to like get creative on how you do that, and then you have to like use stealth to like sneak around and get your gear back. Mm-hmm. In Metal Gear Solid Two, it ta- it goes as far as to be like, yeah, you don't have any of your stuff, and you're naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's like. So you can't even like you 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 can't like pick up guns or anything. You can't you can't really fist fight really. You just have to you just have to stealth it. Mm. Because it, you you've got nothing. You <laughs> start running, chief. Mm-hmm. Right. And I recently chief. watched an episode of Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where um mm-hmm. I don't remember I think the episode's name is Hush. And it was it was downright creepy, but um it's these creatures that is like these demons that feast off of human hearts or something. And the way that they're able to do that without anyone noticing or without anyone recognizing who they are is they'll cast this spell on the entire town where no one can talk. Oh, and so they'll just invade overnight silently and doesn't matter if you notice them, you can't scream. It's like, it's really creepy. I really like it. Uh, ah, all right. Yeah, Thanks let, for let's, fuel. yeah. Let's get back into into Star Wars. I just I like stuff that uh, challenge heroes in unique ways, in ways that like force you to be creative. Um, yeah. So Hondo, we'll go to the next part. Uh, Dooku, uh, Hondo's questioning Dooku. He's like, "Why are you in the middle of nowhere with such an expensive ship?" Sort of thing. And Dooku is like trying to conceal his identity, so he's like, "Oh yeah, I sustained some damage in an asteroid field, and uh, you'd be welcome to keep the ship, but I just need a, I just need a ride off world." So Hondo is just like, "Yeah, I'll take you to Florum. Florum is the, it's a much safer planet, and you know, it's the one that we're, you know, it's the one that we're we're at. You can wait there." But then he's also just like, "There's there's going to be a fee though." So he was like, "Oh, I'm rich. I can take care." He's like, "Yeah, I can. I can compensate you." And yeah, I, I do like I like Hondo's charisma, and I can understand I like his, why I people like, his, like uh, him. I like his little his little Jabba monkey that he has. Yeah. Oh, I know the I know the name of that. I I recorded that somewhere. Let's well, I know I it's the same. It's the same creature as a uh, salacious crumb. Salacious crumb. Oh yeah, yeah, he's like a monkey lizard thing. That's what mm-hmm. they're called. They're monkey lizards. I just forget what the first part of the name is. Yes, I'm. I'm looking because I wrote it down. A Kowakian monkey yeah, that one. lizard. Yeah, Kowakian monkey lizard. Wow. Um, I don't know where I wrote that, but I remember writing that earlier today. Wacky. Very, very wacky. Do you like this one, or do you like uh, Salacious Crumb more? Salacious Crumb doesn't really do anything. Yeah, you just kind of laugh. Like... He just goes, <laughs> and then there's this one. He like uh, he's like Hondo's and... pet. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Let me. I'll find one. <laughs> I'll find one. Well, uh, Pilf Muck Muck. Yeah, that's his name, Pilf Muck Muck. <laughs> what an interesting name. Really interesting. <laughs> I like it. Um. I think it's like it should be illegal to have one of those car- the one of those the Koakian monkey lizards that doesn't have an absolute just like insane name. Like yeah. if you have one in your this Star Wars my, project, it better be called monkey like monkey lizard. It's Kevin illegal Kevin? Like, to jail. You need to name him something like hey, what's what's your Koakian monkey lizard? Oh yeah, his it's name is Dudu Bobby Dudu Bobby Kins the seventeenth in your life. What? Yes. What? what happened to the Every... first sixteen? Just we don't talk. About I ate them. <laughs> I ate them. Oh no! Don't do that. Well, moving on. Uh, and Obi Wan and Anakin. Uh, Anakin's being chased by the Gundark, and Obi Wan's just like, oh, don't. I think she likes you, as he's like, t- you know, messing with his lightsaber, trying to get it to work, and uh. I don't know how to feel about that, because, like, this Gundark seems like one hit from him would 
you know, cripple Anakin or kill him. And Obi Wan's mm-hmm. just like, haha, yeah, yeah, you, you have fun. You? I believe in you, Mr. Chosen One. <laughs> Mr. Main I character. I mean, it, it's, it definitely works for the character, like him, you know, doing that kind of banter. But as far as. Like, how he feels about the situation. You probably have a little more care for Anakin in that situation. I would say, uh, do the funny banter while you're trying to assist him. Exactly, yeah. But, I mean, eventually Obi-Wan joins the fight and they make easy work of the Gundark. Uh, I think they, they, like, drop a rock on it or something. But Yeah, yeah. they they drop some rocks on it. They don't kill it, but they just drop some rocks on it. Yeah. It's just like, owie. But as they're finding a way out of the cave, Dooku makes it to Florum, and the pirates are just like, "Hey, uh, we 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 okay. stole your lightsaber from you." And Honda's just like, "I know your Count Dooku," because he's like searching for his lightsaber, and everyone and draws their guns. Oh, it's like, "Oh no!" And oh, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dooku, he asks uh he's just like, let me contact the separatists and we'll you know, we'll definitely make a bargain. We'll we'll give you money so long as you let me leave. Uh but Hondo is just like, if the separatists will pay to get you back, chances are the Republic will pay even more. And mm. hmm. Well, that's that's true. Probably. Yeah, and I, I feel like, man, this whole thing started because Anakin was able to find out where Dooku was. Why was Dooku on this ship that, you know, is close enough to, you know, being in combat that they were able to fight Dooku, right? And get him to this planet that led him to Florum, right? Mm-hmm. And this works like doubly so because Dooku's not only a Sith Lord, one of the two only Sith Lords, but he's also like a very, very massive diplomat. Like, as far as the um the separatist movement goes, he's basically Palpatine on his side. So he it's is. like he's the head of state, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. So the, why would he ever be in such a position where he could get captured? Parliament. Which I think is really funny that the Separatists have Parliament. Does Palpatine doesn't really ever leave much. Coruscant, as far as we know, in uh, or like as far as the Republic is concerned? As far as the Republic knows, I don't think so. However, I think in season, f- I know that in season five he does leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, because he goes to fight uh, the the two. Yeah, I, in, I, uh, I don't think he really goes Maul anywhere. And Unless he's like he has to meet Dooku for something, and he's probably like, yeah. "I'm gonna go take a vacation." Well, it's like this can work, and I I can believe that it would work. I can believe that a plot like this could take place. That Dooku is put in a position where the Republic almost captures him, so he has to escape, and he winds up stranded. That can work. That can work really well. But in order for it to work, I need a reason why he's in such a vulnerable position. Right, yeah. like. Because if I don't have that, then I have to infer that detail. And I, I see that as, like, I'm putting too much thought into this. Like, I, I'm reaching a point where I'm essentially writing the story for the writers. Right? So right. I, I even wrote an example. Um, Like, I can believe that there's a planet where the Separatists want to turn to their side. So Newt Gunray's busy. He's, like, in the process of negotiating. But they need more convincing. So Dooku's sent there to personally convince them. Like... That could work, and like on the way back, he you know gets uh he gets the chance to kidnap Anakin, and that's what leads to the whole thing. Like that that could really work. I I like that as a possibility, but I just made up that whole story for the sake of setting up this story. Right. Hmm. And for a kids show, like I I guess you don't necessarily need that to happen, and it's not necessarily a problem, but. It's definitely an issue that we don't have all of the details. Yeah. It's like starting halfway through a story. In medias res. Thanks, English class. Oh, I... I didn't know there was a a detail, or like a a name for that. 
Yeah, it's when when you start a story in the middle. Mm. Usually, I mean, you get the, the, like 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 Oedipus. I just you remember just the like potato. Start the potato the start. The potato start. That that's what we called it. <laughs> Where uh, it's like you start in the middle, you go back to the beginning, and then you finish off at the end. And they they specifically talked about um, Homer's Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that yes. That is that is indeed an example. Yes. I guess the, the point being, Dooku's been captured, and now he has been captured by the pirates. And the pirates are going to hold him for ransom for the Republic. So, uh, yes. Back with the Jedi, though. They're lifting rocks to get them out of the cave. And they're, and like, going Ahsoka one at a time. Up. Well, before Ahsoka shows up, uh, they drop a rock, and a bunch of poisonous gas begins to enter the room. And they're just like, oh no, our table. It's breaking. It's, it's breaking. Yeah, it's they, breaking. they begin to move the rocks much more frantically, but, you know, they, they very quickly pass out. And I see this as kind of a flaw because, man, I, I, could, I could definitely uh, believe this idea of, you know, this natural gas exists and it, uh, you know, could be poisonous to them like definitely believe that uh the first problem is it fills the room so quickly that they they pass out within like 30 seconds and then also it's... um well and... it's it's um dioxys isn't it isn't that that's like oh they they never said they just said poisonous gas oh hold on did they hold on dioxys star wars i don't know i don't know any of this Dioxys was a toxic the gas used. used in oh, too, so it's the I same know. thing that they used in uh, in the the, the grenades. Yes. Yeah. Yep, and in huh. grenades, and in the box. I just know it's it can not. Be used. It, yeah, I'm looking at the appearances grenades, in the uh, in the canon side of the wiki, and oh, the yeah, only Star Wars here, is yeah. the box. It's not there. They just said poisonous gas, but it's possible. Oh, what the the reason why I pointed out is because not only does it fill the room insanely quickly, but also, how do Anakin and Obi Wan survive this without long term or short term side effects? Because like this is not breathable air that's entering their lungs. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even oh no, if we, I've been gassed. It's not fun, man. Yeah, like mustard gas. That's that was my first thought. Uh, the long term I've... effects of exposure to mustard gas include loss of taste and smell respiratory diseases recurring infections cancer eye injury like now just imagine that but we don't know what gas this is yeah i i've right. been i've been gassed before when i worked at a factory it's not fun mm -mm. Uh, wait ho hold on you got gas like i got gassed by some kind of cleaning chemical mm. oh did like the ammonia fall into the bleach and you just got like well, they were Mom. cleaning machinery, and they didn't tell us what they were doing, and then it was, mm. uh, we kind of just like, oh, we can't breathe anymore. We probably should go. Oh, I remember what it was. Oh. Uh, when I was working at a fast food place, there was a specific type of, um, I forget the name of the detergent, but it was like a powdery detergent, and I, the only thing I remember was like, if it gets in your eyes, you have to wash them thoroughly for like five minutes straight or else like mm. you could deal with uh loss of vision and i had a co-worker that had lost some of her vision because of that i don't know if she ever got compensated for that but um i just remember there was one moment where i was like trying to open the box and as i opened it i squeezed it a little bit and it shot into my face Ugh. and it freaked me out uh, I, I spent, like, ten minutes in the bathroom just, like, rinsing my eyes with the water. Yeah, fair. Yes. Yeah, I mean, gas is not... It, the... Gas, any chemical entering your system that shouldn't be there, not a good thing. So that's why I pointed out. Yeah, but, yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Yes, they're, they're passing out, and they get saved in the nick of time by Ahsoka and the crew. And they have some banter, uh... And then they joke about the Gundark behind them that woke up, and then they they stop the Gundark and they banter even more. Wow, what a bantery episode! Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there is a joke that they made that I do enjoy, even if I don't really find it funny. 
Uh, I think I enjoy it because it's very in character for them. Uh, cause Ahsoka is just like, wait, you guys lost Dooku, and Anakin is like embarrassingly trying to explain Not himself. All. And then he turns to Obi Wan. He's like, "Chime in anytime." And, so and he just goes, "Oh no, I'm having far too much fun." Yeah, I, I liked that. I, I thought that was he's pretty just fun. like, "No, oh," because I, you know what? I actually think I know why I like it. Because not only is it in character for Obi Wan, especially for this episode, but um, it it's in character for Anakin. It's in character for Obi Wan and Ahsoka, but also it's a good way to help show the connection between obi-wan and anakin because like that's kind of a, a brotherly jab that you give and by the time we reach revenge of the sith they like obi-wan views anakin as a brother mm -hmm. so like to have that kind of a joke it, it feels like a natural connection to like you know you're trying to bridge that gap yeah i feel that and i think this is the first moment where I really feel like they're trying to bridge the gap beyond Obi-Wan, like, constantly scolding Anakin. That's fair. Because when he's scolding Anakin, it feels like he's still in that fatherly role, but when it's, like, we're we're having fun with him, then it's it's definitely, like, we're connecting on more than just, like... It, it's not a paternal bond. It's more of a um a brotherly bond. Yeah. Well, they, they do they do all that, and then we get a scene on Coruscant, where uh, Hondo is meeting with Palpatine, uh, Padme, some Jedi, and even Jar Jar is there. Oh, brother. And on Coruscant, they're discussing ransom terms, because Hondo wants a million credits for Dooku, or else he'll consider the terms with the Separatists. And Padme, before anyone really like has a chance to say anything, Padme just agrees. I find that kind of funny. She's like, yep, sounds good, lads. She's like, it sounds good, but we need to send two Jedi to determine the validation of your claims. And then Hondo's just like, okay, cool, but they can't have weapons. And I was like, oh, okay, that that was a very quick agreement, and but uh, the Jedi didn't even get a chance to say anything. Yeah, no. The Jedi are just like, oh, the I... highway. Yeah. Well, they, they make it to Florum, uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin, because they were the closest, I guess. Um, that's their reason for co for continuing this arc. But um, Obi-Wan and Anakin, they make it to Florum. They're greeted with uh, searching their, them for weapons. And then um, when it's proven they're not carrying, they're sent into a room where there's just a lot of pirates lounging. And we, we see Hondo introduced again, but this time to the uh, to the heroes. And I, I do like that as a scene because he shows off a lot of narcissism because he's lying about how Dooku got captured to make him seem more valiant. Yep. He's just like, ah, yes, he was Anakin cutting and... down people left and right. I was barely able to stop him. And Anakin and Obi-Wan are like, uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Hey, and this is where this is where I talked about Pilf Muckmuck because um, he's he goes to pour Hondo a drink and he's holding Anakin's lightsaber. Yep. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Are they there? Or, or are we not there yet? What? Oh. Continue. I I think I'm lost on where oh. they are. Okay. Uh, well, Anakin, he sees the lightsaber and he takes it back. That's what I meant. That's what I said. He's just like, hey, that's mine. Yeah, he's like, that's mine. I, I, I didn't have a picture for that. But yeah, he takes his lightsaber back and all the pirates get hostile and... Then Obi-Wan diffuses the situation by saying, like, look, we're just here to see Dooku. Uh, can you just show us that he's here? And then we'll we'll be on our way. And then they banter for a second. Well, actually, no, they, they go and talk to Dooku to confirm his kidnapping. Right. Well. I know uh, where I'm at in this conversation. You shut up. You I know where it? I'm at. You found it? All right, cool. Well, they, they have some banter uh, with Dooku, uh, and they restate the episode's plot and stakes, and there's a threat of, you know, the, the what the Weequayans, because that's the name of these people, is they're, they're Weequayans. Um, I swear that's a reference to Moby Dick. Maybe. 
I don't know. I don't huh. know anything about I didn't this, think of that. This whale. Because Queequeg is like the dude oh. who's just like. Yeah. That's his name, right? That's his name. I think so. Okay. I don't know. I you could tell. I don't know. You could tell me his name is literally anything, and I'd believe you. I'm Isn't his name Ishmael? Ishmael. <laughs> pretty. Yeah. That's his that's name for is sure. Icarus. <laughs> Call me Icarus. <laughs> No, that's not. That's why he's in the water because he he had wings. He fell. Oh, no, too close to the sun. Yes. Well, uh, yes. They they talk to Dooku and they restate the the stakes and the plot and they you know everything that just everything. It's just essentially that they do this a lot more often than I remember. Where just halfway through the episode, they just restate what happens. And I get it, because it's a Saturday morning cartoon. Like, that's actually what this show is. So, like, yeah, people will just show up halfway through the episode, because they'll be flipping through channels and be like, oh, yeah, I'll watch, I'll watch Star Wars. But I'm just shocked at how often it's been happening. Like, Fair. yeah, I was halfway through um, prepping this episode when I stopped, and when I came back to it, uh, they... It was like I didn't need to see the first half because the second half just says what happens. But yes, they 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 leave Dooku because they you know they finish going hey 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 hey, and they they start walking away and discussing the possibility of be like this being a trap. And um, mm -hmm. they're immediately greeted by a random pirate who's just like Hondo is throwing a banquet. And it's so, on a big old party, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get drunk with us. Pretty much. Please. Uh, we want to get you drunk so that we can arrest you, too. I mean, uh, I wasn't supposed to say that part. Oh, man. But yes, oh, they... Man, drunk. They... The party's they're over. just like, cool, we'll do that. And then they go back out to their ship they're... to, um, you know, just tell, everybody what's tell everyone on. what's going on. Which is just another restatement. Yep, and Palpatine on. says, Senator Karras and Representative Binks will be dispatched immediately. Uh, which oh, is set sure. up for the next episode. Uh, but yeah, so now, happy about that. now they're at the banquet. Can't you tell how happy I am? Of course. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of the funniest part to me in this entire uh, arc. They're at the banquet, and just pirate shenanigans Stupid. are happening everywhere you know like there, there's a pirate that like gets punched by a lady because he's like look, checking her out uh and there's there's a weak way dancer on the table that they're at and obi-wan he puts his head his hands to his head but anakin's is just staring intently at her <laughs> i'm just like bro you're, you're a man. married man yeah Bro, chill. It's just like chill, I know you're from Tatooine, but good grief. <laughs> yeah, but Hondo just, offers them a drink. I'm not gonna say that. He offers Hondo offers them a drink, and he's just like, "Yeah, we'll have a toast." And we see and secretly they, secretly they spike the, the drink. Drugged. Yes, and so they they have the toast, and during the toast, Obi Wan uses the Force and swaps his drink with the pirate next to him. And Anakin does the same. And it's like, ooh, that's so, that's so smart of you. And they have a discussion. They're just like, oh, yeah, don't. Uh, I forget what they were saying. Like, sometimes just accept things for what they are. Like, we don't need to, you know, we don't need to look more into this. We should just accept the win. And they drink while the guys next to them pass out. Right. And you know what the hilarious thing is? Hmm. In the next episode, they're captured. Yeah. How the, the, the did the they Gungan spike everyone's generalist. drinks, or did they just drink so much they passed out? Well, no, no, no. They, they, the they opening point line is, I guess out. it was. <laughs> so, let's just start off with the the title card: "Fail with honor rather than succeed by fraud." I don't understand what that means in the episode. I don't understand what it means. I in actually general. don't understand what that means at all in the episode, and. <laughs> Fail with honor rather than succeed by fraud. I guess there's a, a level of this is an argument that honor is more important than anything. But I mean that that's literally saying fail but be a good person rather than succeed by being a little morally dubious, which 
I can see the argument, but also I can see I can see this being taken the wrong way. Yep. But yes, Anakin <sighs> and Obi Wan, they're they're just captured anyways. And the uh the funniest part about that is like Anakin even says, I only took a sip and Obi Wan's just like, We were obviously drugged. Which is like And it's like, No, you weren't. You they they, they gave them more. I think that they, they the only them argument like a, is that one. they drugged everyone at the table. Like that that's the only oh. argument that I can really think of. But Yep, I guess that's the case. Uh and they're actually tied to Dooku. And it's like, whoa, what a reveal. What a twist. Wow. And I do find this funny because it's like this is a similar thing like what I was saying with the Gundark. Now they're stuck in a similar situation where they don't have their lightsaber, but they're also stuck to do this tied together with a Sith. That's that's mm. creative, and I like that as a concept, but I'm not a big fan of the execution. Mm. Uh, in the same way that I'm not a big fan of the banter in the episode, because Dooku's just like, I've tried to remove these restraining things, but, you know, I'm, I, I was unsuccessful. And Anakin's next response is just like, it's bad enough being in the same room as you. Do I have to hear you talk? And it's like, dude, he he's just telling you the situation. He's he's legit actively he's, trying he's to literally help helping you, you, actually. Yeah. He's actually helping, actually. Sh shut up for just a second, please. Yeah. Well, uh, there's that. And then uh, there's a... I guess we'll just get right into the subplot because Hondo, um, the whole thing is they're getting... They're getting the, the deal to go down. Uh, Hondo's plan is to sell Dooku to the uh, Republic and Anakin and Obi-Wan to the Separatists. And, like, the idea is that, you know, he's, that's going to be the trade, they're going to make a lot of money, but uh, they're going to leave before anyone can realize that they've been duped. And the subplot is these two guys, these pirates, there's a lot of pirates that are forming a bit of a mutiny. Uh, Kirk also is the one with the yellow headband, and, and uh, he's the Lego guy I saw in the sticker book. Oh, okay. Uh... But yeah, the the Republic is offering their payment in the form of spice, even though they said last time, they only said credits. Uh, I guess it's spice now. It's a million credits worth of spice. So uh, some of Hondo's men are planning to shoot down the ship, kill the crew, and steal the spice. Uh, and they'll escape with it while the Republic now has its eye on Hondo, and Hondo doesn't know what happened. I feel like that's a good subplot. That it's not bad. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think it works all together. I think so. I I'm, I don't see any like immediate glaring flaws of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing really stands out, but um, yeah, I'd say it works. So I'm not gonna break down the Jar Jar stuff. This one, this episode's gonna go quite a bit faster. I've already skipped quite a, quite a ways ahead. Uh, Jar Jar's here. Uh, Jar Jar and Senator Karras are here, and, um, uh, man, Jar Jar plays, like, this massive role in the destruction of their ship, because, I mean, obviously the subplot is they're gonna shoot down the ship, but, uh, Jar Jar trips, and he ends up, uh, bringing down one of the pilots, and he distracts the pilots so much so that they get hit by the, the rockets, and the ship crashes. And as this happens, uh, Senator Karras leaves the safety of his, uh, his seat to help Jar Jar. And because and he did that, he dies because the ship crashes. Which is really stupid. And it's also pointed out later, character. it's also pointed out later that the pilots died as well. So many clones died and Senator Karras died because of Jar Jar's incompetence. Yes, that, that's three casualties. Mm-hmm. Jar Jar has a lot of blood on his hands. Oh, man. Out of his and sheer stupidity. The reason I point this out is because this is, like, the most egregious thing that we've seen Jar Jar accidentally take part in, and it's never pointed out in the episode. Like, his incompetence 
can and almost does change the tide of the entire war effort. Yep. And on top of all of this, Jar Jar has a different voice actor, and it's very obvious and very annoying. Like, I thought the other voice actor was, you know, doing a good job because he sounded like Jar Jar. This guy doesn't sound like Jar Jar. He sounds like a dude that's trying to sound like Jar Jar, but is failing at it. It's, like, super deep. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It sounds very froggy. I I don't know how else to explain it. It sounds... I, I, I don't know. It makes sense in my head what I mean. It's very hard for me to, to explain. So Ahmed Best uh, voiced Jar Jar Binks in The Phantom Menace. And apparently Phil Lamar voiced him in a Lego thing. But I don't know if... I don't know who voiced him in The Clone Wars. It looks like they both did, so... Yeah, I'm guessing just one of them does not sound the same, right? Like they they don't sound one similar of those enough. Things does not like it's not like the I'm already blanking on the voice actor for Dooku. Um, yeah, going from Christopher Lee to yeah, Burton. and it's so well like it's such a good transition that I didn't even notice it at first. So it's like yeah. that's really really cool, but um. Yeah, it's not the case for Jar Jar. I'm not going to complain about it too much. I just, it was a huge staple for the episode because I spent the whole time thinking like, man, this is not the same voice and that it's not as good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This whole episode is really just kind of slow. I mean, well, it's really slow, but also... So, like, that like, that's up. the biggest part that connects us to the subplot is the fact that the... There's the uprising or the you know mutiny with the with the pirates, pirates and Jar Jar is you know leading the other side of that. Yeah. But then we've got a whole other situation happening where Anakin, Obi Wan, and Dooku are trying to escape. Yeah, and that doesn't really to work. And I mean, kind of again, works, I yeah. think this plot is fine, but there's just nothing outstanding about it. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. nothing that really sticks out to talk about. It's just kind of just there and it's not much yeah and a big a big frustration that i have is in the dialogue because it's not what is here that's the problem it's what could be here that's the problem yeah every line every second of interaction between anakin obi-wan and dooku is it's just dripping with this potential for character development right i mean imagine a conversation about the damage that the universe has sustained because of the war or the fact that Dooku took Anakin's hand or even just just them trying to get information from the from each other through oh, like yeah. in just attacking each other's thoughts cuz they but have in- the force mm-hmm. but instead it's just all banter yeah it's just yeah that that's pretty much it even it doesn't even have to be Anakin and Obi Wan. It could literally be a random Jedi interacting with Dooku, and that would be so cool. Imagine Dooku is like trying to convince them why he's right, because like Dooku, of mm. course, believes he's right. So it's like, yeah. Instead, we've got Saturday morning cartoon villain who just jibes at them, or jabs at them, and Jedi who are just very quippy all the time. Yeah. And I don't mean to I don't mean to undersell that because I mean there can be fun stuff with that, but that's just that's how it feels when you compare it to what it could be. Mm-hmm. What I will say is be because this is very early Clone Wars and they weren't super like super you know with what they wanted the concept to be. Mm-hmm. This was kind of before they knew like oh. More than just kids watch this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they knew that. They didn't know their full potential. They didn't expect it either. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, Kyle, I feel like when we when we were talking about this in private, when we had just finished watching it together, we both came to the conclusion that we just felt kind of nothing from this episode. Yeah. And I think true. that's why. It's just because there's so much potential that could have happened that they just either didn't realize that they could have done or decided against doing and i don't know which is worse yeah yeah 
yeah pretty much well they mm-hmm. they escape and they get caught and then they escape again and then they get caught again and that's pretty much the next 10 minutes sounds of like they need to change their plan yeah well uh, I guess going to the other side of things, uh, the pirates get the spice, and the plot is let's have Jar Jar and the clones get it back. That'll work. Yeah, and that's that's like the entirety of the rest of the episode. It's it's not a lot. The pirates get the spice, and then the they have a whole thing where Jar Jar and the clones get the spice back, and oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> what? oh. oh wait Look a minute! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at the guy on the oh, ring! Holy moly! Oh. That that is a clone with he's like flexible legs. Dude, caked up. I didn't wow. even Zoom. notice that the first time. Hey. I, I was just going through Yo. and getting screen Zoom in on that. Wow. <laughs> Cake right here. Holy that so moly. Good. That's just impressive. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I Hold on. I was literally just going through pausing every like few minutes and just taking a screenshot. And I just remember I was like, alright, let's get them on the the animals with the spice. I didn't even notice that. that Hold is, on. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Oh geez. Well, um, yeah, they get the spice back, and for the rest of the episode, it's just them trying to bring it back to um to Hondo. But for Anakin yeah. and Obi Wan, after their second escape attempt fails, they get separated from Dooku, and they start getting tortured. Uh, it's not really well shown in this, but this is Anakin and this is Obi Wan. They're getting tortured. Ah, uh, uh, lovely. Yes, and then um, with stuff going on with Jar Jar, they they accidentally knock out the power because of some stuff, some shenanigans they're doing, and that allows everyone to escape. Dooku kills some people and leaves. He's got a he's got a, actually a really dark moment where he grabs the, I forget the name of the pirate that was mutinying. He was like leading the mutiny. Um, Kirk also. Yeah, he grabs him and forces him to shoot his friend before choking him out. That's like oh, that's that really dark. Very brutal. Yes, it's it's quite brutal for the show. And then uh, he escapes, and I think Obi Wan and Anakin witness the escape because they're trying to get out as well, and so they just let Hondo go, and they're just like, "All right, we're leaving." That's like, just... oh, okay. Because yeah, that's that's the weirdest part. Uh, because Anakin and Obi Wan have been tortured, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, Obi Wan, he's just like, yeah, let's just leave on even terms. Despite we've been lied to, we've been kidnapped, and we've been tortured. There are no negotiations, no retaliations, and they just they just leave. And Obi Wan just is like. He justifies this, like, this whole thing by saying, we have no quarrel with you, and we seek no revenge. And Hondo's just like, that's very honorable. And and the thing is, he's just like, I respect you, but then like next the next season they have a story where they just fight Hondo again. They don't even see, like, we don't even see them bringing the spice onto uh, the Twilight. So I'm just left to believe they left a million credits worth of spice with the pirates. Just, just there. Yeah, they just leave. Yeah. But oh, lovely. It's kind of whack. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I find it this an whole... interesting. I find it to be an interesting sentiment for um, for Obi Wan to say we have no quarrel and we seek no revenge because Hondo and the pirates are responsible. Like they led an attack that killed a senator. They denied the Republic the capture of Count Dooku. Uh, they kidnapped two Jedi and they terrorized many clones. The Republic absolutely has some massive quarrels with the pirates. Mm-hmm. But yep. that's the end or of the episode. Or maybe they're just like, actually, we're gonna punish Jar Jar for the deaths of these senators. <laughs> Jar Jar? You know what? I, I'd accept that to if that happened. Team. But... Ah, oh, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's, the, that's the one. Um, I feel like this entire arc is like a I'm bit of a... I'm seeing the meme... 
Before we wrap up, I'm seeing the meme of Jar Jar's public execution. It's just that meme of the two guys who are about to be hanged and Jar Jar's next to somebody else and Jar Jar just turns over and just first like, time. first time. <laughs> first time. That's such a good movie, by Captain the way. Captain Jar Jar Sparrow. That's not from Pirates of the it, Caribbean. It isn't? Wait, what is it from? It's that's from Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Oh, I don't know. I I just see pirates and I think, oh yes, that's that's. that's they look cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> they look like pirates. I see it hanging, and I think pirates. I played Assassin's Creed. Dude, they hang people in the Old West too. It's no, too, it's too thick. no, 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 no. That's only in the Caribbean. Oh, clearly, clearly. they didn't wow. invent that technology by then. Man, I it wish that invite, I wish I wish invent. I would have seen the gallows in the Little Mermaid movie. That would have made I didn't me feel realize better. what I said. They didn't invent technology for hanging <laughs> by the time cowboys showed up, but they had it when pirates who have been around earlier. <laughs> I was gonna let that one slide. No, I was no. about to be like, you know what, whatever. But what? then you're just like, hold on, hold on, wait a second. I can't deny myself of my own stupidity. It's a, that, that much is clear. Yes. Well, that is the episode. Um, hmm. I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like, like I've said, it's just, it's kind of a nothing episode because they just, they have so much that they could do, but they don't really do a lot with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, how should, how should the explosion happen? Well, yeah, I think I'm probably editing this one. So how oh, should okay. happen? How should I how mean? Shall it happen? Look at the massive expansion of cake on this clone right here. Oh. It, it's quite glorious. His gluteus maximus is about to get a little bit more maximus, if you if you know what I mean. Uh, whoa, okay, hang on. Whoa, I know it's June, okay, when this comes out, but oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. buddy. Whoa. There's a reason why I keep on putting clones as my profile pictures. Ah. Uh, <laughs> when we just reveal a bomb. 